空と海が触れ合う彼方。Hey everyone, this is CPR Psycho, and today we are going to play a new vision novel. Yes, it's by Moe Novel. I know Moe Novel is notorious, but this vision novel, let me tell you, really interests me a lot because one thing is that this is like the first vision novel.、Uh, that was, or maybe not say first vision novel, but rather this vision novel, its Japanese version, original Japanese version, was actually released only about a month ago. That's like、uh, around end March, and it just got released in English. So pretty fast. Well, I'm not sure how the translation is going to be like. Some people who have played it said that it's kind of mediocre. Some people have seen some lines of the screenshots from this vision novel say it's mediocre. But I think it's. I'm, I'm not sure. We have to you know like play this vision novel to find out. But what I'm more interested in is that this vision novel seems pretty interesting. And it's actually the first vision novel by Pu Tok that isn't 18 plus. It's entirely、uh, all ages. Yeah, for all ages. So. Yes, there's no hitch scenes in this game. It's purely, yeah, it's purely、uh, for all ages. And as you can see from the logo up there, Adventure of a Lifetime, Sora to Umiga, Ureao Kanata. So this looks like、uh, an adventure in the seas and all that. So it's pretty cool, and it features a main protagonist and two heroines. So will be yes. So I'm really curious and interested to to play this. Also considering that it's quite new, it's also just recently released in Japan about a month ago. I'm really excited. So, yeah. Without further ado, let's begin this. What's that? <laughs> Alright, beyond the everlasting blue. So we begin the game. <coughs> it's true that I grew up in the middle of a totally unremarkable commuter town. Hmm. Uh, am I the beach, the sea. When people ask me that, it's the ocean that springs to mind. <coughs> Where am I from? I'm from the sea. Yes, from the ocean. Even now, I can see that endless blue expanse stretching out as far as the eye can see. My mind is right there in those beautiful, clear waters. Down underwater we go.、Oh, that's really nice. Somewhere near the bottom, even down here, light from the surface still reaches me. The sparkling rays of the sun illuminate the otherworldly scenery. So quiet, so peaceful. Fishes, and even as、uh, fish swim by, it feels like I'm drifting through the sky. So it com- so basically is like comparing the sea to the sky, which is, which are kind of the same, yes. But then I start swimming after her. Her? Wait up, Chisa! As I struggle to keep up, Chisa turns to me. So are we like in the child days? She says while making a teasing gesture. I can't help but wonder how she swims like that. It's like watching a sea creature in the wild. She's so at home in the water. Where's Chisa? I've never been a great swimmer myself, so I can only try to keep up. So why would I even consider the bottom of the sea as my home too? To be honest, I don't really get it myself. Wow, this is an,、uh, actually a very beautiful island. So the main protagonist actually stays in this island. It looks kind of like Okinawa, kind of. I guess my memories of the sea are just much more vivid than anything on hand on land. I mean. I'll、probably never experience anything like it in my life again. We're in a tropical island, from the looks of it. There's something my grandpa always used to say: "Life is an adventure." It was that attitude that suddenly took him away to a tropical island. With coral reefs, my grandpa really loved that ocean. This ocean in particular, huh? As I watched the bubbles float away from me, I noticed the sun's rays filtered down through the water. The ocean floor looks pretty, but that beauty has a cruel edge to it. Humans didn't evolve to survive in that kind of environment. Yeah, not in the ocean. That's what. Maybe that's why it's easy to feel lonely when you're at the bottom. Just what would happen if I were let down, left down here, all alone? 
Oh, alright. Lucky, luckily for me, I'm not alone. I have a buddy. The girl tugging insistently on my arm. Even years after journeying through that deep blue, and still remember how her touch always kept me calm. That might explain why. Why, when I see the ocean, I feel like I've come home. So the ocean is his home. Whoa, we have a cruise. This looks like a cruise. Cruise ship. It was that moment just before dawn, where the sky gradually lightens. The ship was cutting through the gentle waves, sailing further into the Pacific. Unable to sleep, I left my second class cabin and its rock cut mattress behind to take a walk around the cruise ship. Sure it's nice and cool this time of day, as we are in the perspective of the main protagonist, Hiroki. The smell of the salty air brought back all kinds of memories of summer's past. It would be another 6 hours until the boat arrived at the island. 6 hours wasn't a lot compared to the 4 years I had been away, but with nothing to do, I was really bored. So this is actually kind of like, if my heart had wings, right? Well, this is yet another coming of age vision novel, just like if my heart had wings and a sky full of stars. Uh, and this is kind of like a similar setting as in my heart, it means where the main protagonist was also like away from his home, old hometown for like five years before he came back. Yeah, so and this guy is the same, away for four years before he came back to this island. Feeling restless, I went up on deck. Huh? Someone else is here? I didn't think I would run into any other passengers at this hour. And we meet the first heroine, isn't it? <laughs> Oh, the first heroine. She actually looks really, yeah, really beautiful. You know, through this view, yeah. And, and she's wearing a, is she wearing a school uniform? Looks like it. Why is she wearing a school uniform though? Hmm. And I like, like, like her. You no, know, the 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 what you call that? The shirt, the hem of her shirt. You no, know, flying. Can see a bit of her skin. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> But over by the deck, railing was a girl looking out towards the horizon. The sea breeze was blowing her hair around. Her hair was pale blonde, but it looked natural. From what I could see of her face, she didn't look Japanese. Yeah, maybe a bit of American. She was really pretty. Beautiful girl, silhouetted against all the colors of the pre-dawn sky. It was like something out of the movie. The only thing that felt out of place were her clothes. Yeah, why the school uniform? Precisely, why? <laughs> like, she's like wearing school uniform for that the school in that island or something like that? Those sailor style uniforms are common in the city. Actually, yeah, her uniform also kind of looks like a sailor uniform. And she looked around my age, so she was probably in high school. Would she be a foreign exchange, exchange student all the way out here? I just couldn't figure it out. Oh, she's looking at me. The girl finally seemed to notice me. Uh, so, uh, uh, hello, hello. Speaking English, in yeah, actually in English. What, why, why you look like this? She ignored me and turned away. Uh, maybe I should have just left her alone. Uh, maybe you can't understand me. Should I try another language? I don't know how to say Ohio though. <laughs> I don't know how to say Ohio in Jap in English. English too. Ohio. Oh, so you can speak Japanese. Oh, okay. <laughs> the girl said in flawless Japanese. Half, okay, half Japanese, okay. She sounded irritated. She kind of seems like a Tsundere a bit. It must be annoying when someone assumes you don't speak their language just because of your appearance. Yeah, kind of rude, you know, Hiroki? I guess that was pretty rude of me. Um, Gomenasai. Ah, Arigato. She went back to gazing out across the water. Her expression still a little sad. Why? Why you look sad? Oh, we have something new. So. Okay, so the place that we're going to is the Ogasawara Islands. Okay, so that's the place we're going to. 
It's a World Heritage Site Islands in the Pacific Ocean, 1,000 km southeast of Tokyo. So it's actually pretty close to Okinawa, right? Because Okinawa is like the southernmost part of Japan, but it's in the more in the southern western part. Yeah. And so it's in you know, over 30 islands, only Chichijima and Hahajima. What kind of names are these? Chichijima and Hahajima? <laughs> Chichi? Haha? <laughs> well, in case you all don't know, Jima means island. Yes. Actually, yeah, if it's just a word on its own, it's called Shima, but when combined with another term, it's called Jima. So yeah, Jima means island. So Chichijima and Hahajima, with Chichijima being the transport link between the mainland and Ogasawaras. So wildlife has evolved to be unique, but many creatures are endangered due to the land, re uh, land development. The seasons vary little, with almost no change between summer and winter. So it's kind of like, all year round it's like summer and all that. Yeah, like, warm, not moderate temperatures. Okay. <coughs> the boat we were on was a ferry service. It was taking us to the Ogasawara Islands from Tokyo, but it would take 24 hours. Also, we are coming from Tokyo. 24 hours? It's quite long. The passengers were mostly tourists. People traveling for pleasure. I guess that included me too. Alright. Alright, oops, I didn't mean to do that. Um, I just jump back. Yes. <laughs> but this girl was different. She didn't look like she was here for fun. What brings you to Ogasawara? Yes, she doesn't want to talk. I want to be, you know, friends with you, you know. But I'm nothing if not persistent. I'm going there to visit my grandma. It's been four years since I last saw her. Still no response. So, you ever been diving? You 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 ever been dive? Uh, maybe this. <laughs> let me think. Uh, have you ever been diving? Uh, something like that. It's kind of a kind of an awkward line, but. Hmm. Yeah, but anyway, so, you ever been diving? Scuba, I mean. You know, with the tanks and stuff. You should give it a try. There are places around here you can go, even if you're not licensed. The atmosphere just seemed to get more awkward the more I spoke. Just as I, just, just as I was starting to regret saying anything in the first place, I finally got a response. You hate the ocean, then why are you going to the Ogasawara Islands? Then why come here? I blurted out without thinking. If you didn't like the ocean, then Okasawara was not the place for you. Some personal reasons. The blonde girl fell silent again, deep in thought. As if on cue, a sudden noise rang out, snapping her out of her reverie. Is that like a mobile phone? Yeah, it's a phone, iPhone. The girl took her ringing smartphone out of her pocket and glared at the screen. Hmm. With one last disgusted, disgusted look at the device, wait, that music, oh my god. <laughs> that music, that ringtone, is actually the If My Heart Had Wings opening theme song. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. With one last disgusted look at the device that dared to disrupt her fire thoughts, she raised her hand above her head, then swung her arm forward. Wait, wait, what are you doing? Wait, wait what? Hey, did you just throw your phone into the ocean? And the phone and the phone flew from the sea out into the sea. The piercing ringtone became more and more distant before it vanished completely. What do you think you're doing? What do you mean? Don't need any eat anymore. What do you mean? <laughs> I, I thought you said you hate hated the ocean, so that's why you came. Then why you why do you come to Ogasawara Islands? And then why did you throw the phone away? I guess the phone is actually like. Probably calling from Tokyo, which is a city. But now you go to the Ogasawa Islands. It's like you're in uh, you're part of the ocean anymore. You're not in the city. You're in the countryside, so you don't need the phone anymore. Okay, I throw it. Why? <laughs> That's not the point. The ocean's not your trash can. She probably wasn't expecting me to call her out on littering. Surprise, surprise. Think about the damage to the environment. Okay, at least she's being apologetic, you know. Oh man, now we're too far away to get it back. I leaned over the handrail as far as I could, 
but there was no chance of getting the phone back yet. He's not going to like jump off the ship. <laughs> no. <coughs> After an uncomfortable silence, she grumbled a complaint. Why? Because it's not for humans, but not really. Well, human. Well, ocean is not a, a home of humans. Yeah, humans can't really like live in the ocean unless we invent some kind of a, a device that can allow us to permanently live in the ocean. <laughs> yeah, I'm not talking about scuba diving and all that. Like, as in, literally live like the fishes. I guess she just needed to let off some steam. You know, the ocean is pretty much all there is in Ogasawara. What she's doing on this boat if she doesn't like the sea? Gusts of wind blew towards us. Brushing her long blonde hair out of her way, or rather out of her face, the girl spoke again. Something that sank into the ocean years ago? Hmm. After that, she said no more. She just stared out at the sky as dawn turned into day. Wait, this is dawn? I thought this is like dusk, but okay. Dawn! So it's actually early morning. I could tell she wanted to be alone, so I decided to head back to my cabin. But I will be seeing more of each other soon. Before leaving the deck, I took one last look at this enigmatic girl. So it's like, I guess this probably like love at first sight. <laughs> so probably we have now have... I know that this vision novel only has two heroines. Basically this girl, the first girl we met. Yeah, and the other girl is probably Shisa who is the childhood friend. So yeah, so it's the first girl versus the childhood friend. <laughs> but we'll be exploring both heroines, so yeah. A journey to get back something precious lost at sea. It sounded like a silly reason for a trip, but there was something in her expression that told me she was dead serious. Even as I walked back to my cabin, I couldn't wipe that girl's serious face from my mind. We'll be seeing more of her soon. So there we go, Adventure of a Lifetime, Sorato Miga, Ureao Kanata. Alright, are we arriving? Yes, we're arriving, yes. We're arriving. So that's the, the, the ships. The, what you call that? The pillar or something like that? Yeah, I don't know the exact term for it. Yeah. Well, I mean, this looks definitely looks like a cruise ship, right? Yeah. With a Japan flag right there. Anyway, we're here. So we're at the... Chichijima, part of the Chichijima Archipelago, the second largest island in the Ogasawaras, and along with uh, Anijima and Ototojima, make the Chichijima Archipelago. Oh, okay. Iwo Jima is the largest, however, it's 300 kilometers away. These deep ocean islands have never been connected to the continents, and as a result, have an abundance of unique native species. Now you have really picked me. <laughs> I might want to try going to the Ogasawara Island someday. It was 11.34am. After a quiet voyage, the ferry docked in Futami Port on Chichijima, the transport hub of Ogasawara. Yosh! Tsuite! Uh, <laughs> something like that. Tsuite Kokoni Arun! Or something like that. Alright, finally here! I stepped off the boat, glad to have my feet on solid ground again. We are the Futami Port, a westward port located on the north of Chichijima that connects Ogasawara and the mainland. It also serves as shelter from storms for nearby ships. Oh, it only sees one liner a week, full in busy seasons. One liner a week? Oh, that's so it's quite rare. The port was packed with tourists just arriving and locals coming to welcome them. I glanced over the crowd of people standing with what looked like hotel signs in their hands. Someone was supposed to be meeting me here. Hello, Shoha. Oh well, who's that someone? 
It's not like this was my first time here, I already knew where to go. As I was walking down a familiar road, a crowd of people came forward to question the ferry's passengers. From what I could make out, they were looking for someone, you know, just to take them to their hotel. I wonder what's going on. It was none of my business, really. Also, I thought. Hey, where are we go eh? Is that girl again? But where is she going? Why is she running? That's when I caught sight of a girl hiding in the shadows, doing her best to sneak away unnoticed. Or is she like stalking me? <laughs> Why are you stalking me, girl? Hey, aren't you? It was the girl in the sailor uniform I had seen on deck early this morning. Yeah. What do you mean she? Huh? Oh. Too late. Oh well. One older man fought through the crowd and made his way towards us. Who's this guy? The blonde girl behind me flinched reflex reflexively. You're talking to me? Machiko's grandson? Huh? Oh yes! Hi, how are you? I used to see this guy around all the time back when I visited the islands more often. Who are you? It's good to see you again. What's going on here? Missing person? Why is she a missing person? <laughs> um, um, blonde girl? What's going on? Ah, uh, well... She's actually right behind me. But hiding behind me. But I couldn't bring myself to rat her out. At this rate, they'll find her soon anyway. My pen pal, okay? My forum friend. <laughs> and just like that, she was caught. Oh, her? Uh, uh, this is, uh, well, you know, you know, you see? Oh my god. Oni chan. Seriously? Oni chan? <laughs> huh? Oni chan! Oni chan! Well, I don't know why there's this translation. I mean, clearly the girl only said Oni chan, but why is there extra lines? But yeah, that's Oni chan. <laughs> oh, right, right, of course. Uh, uh, kore wa ore no imoto desu. <laughs> my, my, my younger sister, yes. Sure, it's nice weather today, huh? Ah, ee, tenki da ne. Ha 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 Ah, so da yo, so da yo. Eyes and hair were completely different colors. Yeah. We didn't look the least bit alike. Hirogun, Imoto san nan ka itake? Um, <laughs> yeah, well, this is the first time I brought her to Ogasawara. She was looking forward to the summer vacation so much. She even dyed her hair. Such a breath. <laughs> hey, play along, okay? The man's eyes were boring to me now. Well, we better get going, lots to do today. Come on, sis! Uh, uh, this is so funny, what the heck, man. I grabbed her hand and led her away as fast as I could without looking suspicious. What the heck, man, seriously. <laughs> okay, I think this is far enough. Why are you running away from them? Right, so we're at the Omura Beach, a beach near Futami Port. Since it's, a, it's the closest beach to the port, it's popular with tourists as well. Its beaches are made of coral dust. Local term for corals that have, coral that has been uh, ground to a sandy texture by the waves. Oh, sometimes you can find lovely unbroken pieces of coral mixed in as well. I like all these descriptions. Actually, uh, the other vision novel that you see these kind of descriptions is in... Uh, Another vision novel translated by Moe novel, uh, that's... which one was it? Yeah, the one... I forgot... yeah, Love Kami. Basically, Love Kami, the both Love Kami games. Yeah, they have this kind of descriptions. Yeah. From the port, we headed along Omura Beach before turning into Ogamiyama Park. Oh, are we like holding her hand? <laughs> huh? Oh, sorry! I realized I was still holding her hand as we now look at Ogamiyama Park. It's an ocean-facing city park on Chichijima. 
comprised of the Hiri Ogamiyama area in the flat section of central Omura facing Futami Port. It hosts a wide variety of natural environments. There are wooden stages during summer festivals and a bond festival is held here. Ah, so I guess we'll be seeing this later down the road, probably. This is the summer, right? She blushed, rubbing her wrist gently. Yeah, because she overheard, right? The old man saying, Yeah, I'm Hiro. And what's your name? Hiroki Wizuno at your service. <laughs> and you are? Kimiwa? Yeah, so she's half Japanese, half American, so she has a big English name, Emily. Okay, Emily. We met this morning, right? On the deck of the ferry? Yeah. Yeah. And she also does look, doesn't look, um, like, she does have some characteristics of a westerner, yeah. It seemed like she finally remembered me. Maybe she was too busy trying to get away to notice before. I could only wonder what, what she was running for, from, all alone and still in her school uniform. What if she actually ran away from home? That's why she's still in her school uniform, maybe. Emily took a plastic bottle out of her bag and gulped down some juice, orange juice. She had really worked up a sweat during our escape. I soon realized I was just as tired. Too bad there weren't any vending machines nearby. Oh, sure, if you want to give me an indirect kiss, that is, sure. Huh? <laughs> Sure, it's fine. I can give you an. You can give me an indirect kiss. That's fine. Oh, thanks. I took the plastic bottle and stared at it for a moment. I wasn't used to sharing drinks with someone. I guessed that it must not be a big deal wherever she was from here. It's not a big deal in the in the West. Then again, when I first met Emily, she did bring up the fact that she is Japanese, but probably. She knows more about the Western culture. She's more familiar with the Western culture than Japanese culture? If this was just a girl from my class, I probably wouldn't freak out so much. But she was so beautiful. Doing my best to look casual, I took a few sips. It was only orange juice, but right then it felt like the best thing I had ever tasted. I was probably thirstier than I had realized. Well, first things first. Do you have a place to stay? Don't worry, it was nothing. All I did was grab her hand and run, after all. Back at Omara Beach, there's a little spot called Machiko's Cafe. My grandma runs it and she's a really good cook. Come by sometime if you like. Oh, so you have a place to stay? Emily flashed me a bright smile before turning away. Okay. Ah. Don't mention it. She looked back at me one last time before waving and quickly walking away. I watched her until she was out of sight. She looks really nice when she smiles. Compared to when I saw her on the deck, on the verge of tears, I thought this smiling face suited her better. With that little adventure concluded, I headed back to Futami Port. What was up with her anyway? I hope she wasn't a stowaway or something. Yeah, not a rope or something. She left the boat the same as the rest of us, so probably not. She didn't look like she would cause trouble either. But I still felt a nagging uncertainty. I hadn't, I had gotten so caught up in helping her, I wasn't sure if that was even the right thing to do now. It's fine, we've kept her. I thought about asking the people searching for her for more information, but they had already moved on. The pot had been so busy before, but now it was almost deserted, with only a few tourists milling around with cameras. Apart from the tourists was a girl standing alone looking for another girl. She was around the same age as me, with a tan and long black hair tied in a ponytail. Could that be her? Chisa? She might be the person who was supposed to meet me here, but I wasn't sure, so I tried getting a little closer. Hmm... Is it her? I really can't tell. Well, only one way to find out, let's ask her. It had been four years since I had, I had last seen her. The people do change. 
I grew more than 7 inches in that time and probably looked different in other ways too. Oh, there's the other girl. Uh, Sumimasen! Oh. The girl's ponytail bounced as she turned to face me with a blank expression. Oh, it is. <laughs> oh, see some. She, uh, her, her boobs kind of. Her uh, cleavage kind of exposed a bit. Huh? <laughs> so cool, cool. Hmm, <laughs> okay. So she wears like this. <laughs> we should see the full view, you know. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, I think this orange, you see this orange bikini that, I think it's a bikini, right? This orange bikini that she's wearing. It's definitely not, it's definitely not a uh, pant, uh, not underwear. Yeah, this looks more like a bikini rather than an underwear. But hey, I, would, I wouldn't be surprised if it's underwear because there are girls who are daring to wear something like this. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure it's bikini, so. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, po the girl's ponytail bounced as she turned to face me with a blank expression. Crap, wrong person after all. Oh, how would you know? Standing next to her this closely, it was obvious she was different from the person I was looking for. Are you sure about that? I was looking for a tomboy, not a cute young lady. But hey, she might be a... I know, it doesn't mean a tomboy can't grow into a cute young lady. Sumimasen, uh... Machigai yes. <laughs> Sorry my mistake. I tried to laugh off the mistake. But just then a cry of distress rang out behind us. Ah! What? A woman had dropped her camera in the sea while trying to take a photo of the ferry setting sail. Oh, is, is it I, I I'm guessing the girl is going to like take off her shirt and then dive down to grab the camera. On the bed? <laughs> Oh, that's, that's no way to start a vacation, huh? There we go. <laughs> but in other words, the girl beside me started taking off her clothes. Fast. So she's wearing short shorts. <laughs> that's fast, that's quick. Is she like a lifeguard or something like that? <laughs> yeah, just take off the shirt. Then the, the short... The, the jeans. Yeah, short jeans. Also take off. <laughs> oh, time to get the camera back from the sea. All right. <laughs> Let me take a good look at this. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> Find another word. The girl beside me started taking off her clothes. What the? She didn't stop at her jacket, but slipped out of her shorts too. Her skin glowing under the skin, or rather, her skin glowing glowing under the sun. Made a real effort not to stare, but this wasn't something you saw every day. What the hell are you doing? Why do you probably know this? To my surprise, she wasn't wearing regular underwear, but a bikini swimsuit, yeah, so it's bikini. <laughs> what? You asked me to hold your, your, sh your clothes? Okay, sure. <laughs> Shoving her clothes into my hands, the girl with a tan and a ponytail kicked off her sandals and ran. Hey, where are you going? <laughs> By the water's edge, the woman paced back and forth, worried about her camera. The girl casually ran right past her. Shh! Everyone jump! Shh! She dove right in. What? She dove off! I was so shocked and confused, I found myself staring down, into, staring down into the sea alongside the woman who had lost her camera. Don't worry, I have, I have faith in her. She's a born diver. I have a feeling she will be. She was always reckless, so I guess that hasn't changed. Uh, why are you saying something like this? <laughs> I said, humbling my thoughts out loud. Now I knew it had to be her, your childhood friend. After a few minutes, a hand holding a camera shot out of the water, followed by a head. <laughs> nice. The woman stepped inside the mason, but the sidewalk was pretty high above the water surface so the girl couldn't climb back up. I hope the camera is waterproof. She would have to swim around to a place where she could climb up or get someone to pull her up. I'll pull you up. Here, grab my hand. Yeah. I reached out towards the girl who stepped blankly for just a second before shaking her head. Hmm. 
Oh, Abunai is dangerous, okay. Okay. I did as she asked, a bit confused. Then with a mighty splash, the girl leapt right out of the water. Wow, she, she can actually jump out of the water. <laughs> wow! Oh! <laughs> with the help of a dolphin? Nice. A large animal, several times the size, leapt from the water with a... Yep, Yuruka. The girl used the boost from the dolphin to help her jump. A moment later, she was like, Shaw, wow, you, that's, you're so awesome, man. <laughs> yeah. Oh. So this is really, this is really a cool child friend, cool girl. And, <laughs> yeah, you know, when someone dropped the camera, she, just, she didn't hesitate to just take off her clothes. <laughs> yeah, take off her jacket, and then her, her short jeans. <laughs> you know? <laughs> wow, amazing. I, I'm really impressed, you know? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Tadaima. Tadaima. Meanwhile, the dolphin dove back below the waves, sending water everywhere. <laughs> well, dolphins are smart. <laughs> it sounded like the dolphin laughed. The dolphin poked his head up and gave a squeak that sounded a lot like laughing. <laughs> nice to see you haven't changed too much, Chisa. Huh? You look different, so I didn't recognize you at first. But there's only one girl I know crazy enough to dive into the sea like that. Ah, yep, yeah, that's me, Hiroki. We stared at one another for a moment longer as the flood of memories finally helped us recognize each other. This was without a doubt my childhood friend Chisa Ogasawara. Come to welcome me back. Wait. Her 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 family name is Ogasawara? <laughs> so wait, so this island actually belong to her family? Alright. She gave the camera back to the tourists who was still stunned. Barely able to believe what she had just seen. I, oh, I, oh, I hope it's not broken too. Good, good thing. Good to know. Bosuiki, waterproof. Alright. So, good. Chisa gave us forced smile, but she doesn't seem to like it. Oh, so she, she's even famous on TV? Kyutaro, okay. Why do you call it Finn? Kyutaro means Kyutaro. <laughs> why do you call it Finn? Uh, but okay, it's fine. Finn is. But yeah, in Japanese, it's Kyutaro. Yutaro. I don't know why Moe Novel doesn't like um, Japanese romanized names, uh, Japanese names for for animals. I don't know what's the what's their problem, <laughs> but sure, I'm gonna call it, I'm gonna call it Kyo, Kotaro, right? Kyotaro or something like that. I wasn't sure if I never, <laughs> yeah. But anyway, yeah, Finn is fine too. But I would have preferred the original Japanese name. I think it's Kyotaro or something like that, but I'll need to confirm later before I say that name again. I wasn't sure if Finn was responding to his name or not, but he let out a series of friendly squeaks. <coughs> the woman started taking pictures of Finn on her phone and her recently recovered camera. I don't know why they changed it to Finn, it's because like Dolphin, so Finn, you know? So maybe that. Yeah, Kyotaro? Maybe it comes from. But I don't know how Iruka and Kyotaro are related, but anyway. She says smart warily and left the tourist to her photography. But anyway, it's good to see you again, Chisa. Yeah. You look really sexy, you've grown up. Yeah, Hiroki. Well, 24 hours. Oh, sorry about that. I was, uh, 
feeling nostalgic and uh, went for a walk. I had a feeling that telling her I ran off with a beautiful girl and met on the boat wouldn't be doing me any favors. Which I have. not. She's uh, glad at me while ringing out her wet ponytail. The action had me feeling some kind of uh, feeling some kind of way, so I had to look away. What does this mean? <laughs> as far as appearances went, she had changed a lot. The last time I visited Ogasawara, I was still in elementary school. Back then, Chisa could easily have been mistaken for a boy, just like Ageha if my heart had rings, right? But now, well. I love your red eyes. And your bikini, yes. And your you know your two melons, yes. That bikini was that bikini was doing a great job of showing off Chisa's full figure, definitely. The healthy glow. The sun had left on her tan skin made her look like she was bursting in energy, yeah. I definitely love the tan too, you know. Tan is pretty nice. When we were kids, she always had a tan, but this was different somehow. Uh, nothing, not really, no? Hen, I'm not hen. <laughs> I'm not strange. Finn looks like he's doing well. He got to change the subject and look over to the dolphin. Other tourists had joined the woman and they were all snapping photos like their lives depended on it. Upon showman, Finn was darting around, letting everyone get a good look of him. Chisa looked worried though. Oh, oh yeah, probably yeah, shouldn't get too close because otherwise the dolphin might get scared or something like that. But it was too late. Uh oh, what? Oops! The flip of his tail, Finn sent a, sent a cascade of water over the assembled tourists, making everyone wet. Yeah. A moment later, they were all drenched from head to toe. And as for Finn, <laughs> this this Finn, she, I don't know if he's a he or she, but this dolphin, <laughs> this Finn really likes to tease people. <laughs> he clearly found the whole thing hilarious. His sweet and innocent demeanor found he looked all too pleased with himself. <laughs> Twisted sense of humor, indeed. Finn sent a final spear water out our way before swimming off towards the open ocean. Oh, so you're not gonna wear your jacket? <laughs> you're just gonna stroll around like this? Okay, cool, that's cool. I mean, we can definitely see that Chisa is the one who really likes to just trip. <laughs> just trip. She like well, she likes to be, you know, to be loose and free. You know, wear loose. Yeah, wear. Basically, doesn't like to wear clothes. Just like to you know, hang around like this, half naked. <laughs> yeah, that's Chisa for you. Okay, but she's wearing her short jeans. Yes. I mean, it's fine though, because this is like basically it's like the beach, right? So it's fine to walk around like this. Yeah, but. Yeah, okay, so we now see that she likes. She's like. Yeah, no. <laughs> likes to be. Yeah. Not, not like. She doesn't like to wear a lot of clothes, basically. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking the same too, more or less. So? So you sure have with those you know, two melons. And your ponytail, maybe? You look really like a lady now. Chisa glanced down her at herself. She was partially dressed now, wearing her bikini top and shorts. Yeah, see with the camera looking downwards. Mm. Yeah, she's only partially dressed now. But now she's just wearing her yeah, her shorts, you no know, uh, short jeans. Her well-defined curves were there for all to see, her skin glistening in the sun. Am I carrying the jacket for her? Probably. <laughs> it was quite obvious that she had changed, but she didn't seem to realize it herself. Well, your hair's longer now, for one. So no, not, not, it's not just that. <laughs> we continued chatting as we made our way to my grandma's house. 
So our grandma lives here and she owns a cafe, right? From the looks of it. Hmm. Machiko's Cafe. It was cl a clean cafe with an open terrace, or rather, an open terrace, so that the view could be enjoyed with the food and drinks served. It was usually open during lunch, but now there were no customers to be found. Well, that's because you always like to wear something like this, you know? <laughs> always like to strip down and all that. <laughs> People may be looking at you. Yeah, but I might go down your route first. Who knows? <laughs> I'm sure it does. I was still finding it hard to believe how different my good friend looks now. How do you deal with guys like that? Oh, okay. She said while mimicking the dive she, she did earlier. Okay. Ah, I see. <laughs> so it's like when people chase after you, then you quickly. But then what happened to your clothes? What about your clothes? You get you just leave it there, leave it on on sh on the shore, <laughs> or something like that, you know. Then you just gonna abandon your clothes. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, but anyway. Hmm. So you wear it all the time. Okay. As Chisa struck a dramatic pose, her breast squished together, creating some impressive cleavage. Yeah, we can even see the, a bit of the side boobs, yes. Oh, nothing. <laughs> nothing, nothing, nothing. Nothing! I can feel the blood rushing to my face. Oh, what? Jesus gaze wandered down to her chest. Actually, I am. Without waiting for an answer, she went to the back door and called out to my grandma. Okay. Actually, I am looking at your books, okay? Why did you deny it? <laughs> there was no reply. Hmm. She probably doesn't want to get up since her legs have gotten pretty bad. Don't worry, I got it from here. I picked up my bags and entered the cafe. Alright, we're gonna meet the grandma. But when I did... What? <laughs> what? Whoa! Grandma? Um, you don't recognize me, Grandma? We talked on the phone, remember? I told you I was coming to help! What? <laughs> grandma raised her king threateningly. Why is my grandma so aggressive? What? <laughs> what? You okay? Watch it! It seems like Chisa also caught her, caught her grandma, but I don't think this is Chisa's grandma, right? So this is. She just called her Ba Chang, so it's like old lady and all that. Yeah, but yeah, Machiko is actually our, our grandma, but Chisa's case probably is not grandma, it's more like just, you know. Oh yeah, a phrase like Bachan, you know, just saying old lady or something like that, you know. Both Chisa and I couldn't get through to her though, so we decided to make a strategic retreat. Okay. So we just ran away. Jeez, I was hoping she had mellowed out a little. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Fight? More like full-on aggression. She's a hazard to my health. A few years ago, my grandpa passed away. Uh, grandma wanted to keep the cafe going, but her legs couldn't keep up. She told me she was going to close shop this summer, so that's why we came back here to like take over. So Machiko's Cafe is a fictional open terrace cafe run by Hiroki's grandmother, Machiko. It's more of a diner than a coffee shop. Or rather, more of a diner than a cafe and has meal sets using locally gathered ingredients. It's a popular place for evening relaxation with locals, but since Machiko sticks are getting bad, it's been set to close this year. So we're probably going to take over it. 
That's why I came back to Og Ogasawara to help out at the cafe one last time. Oh, we're not gonna take over it. Well, that was the plan. <laughs> I know how she is, so I wasn't surprised. Well, we can try to do something to please her or something. It's fine, I'll work something out. I actually come here knowing full well that this could happen. Anyway, where are we going next? With no place to stay, I just followed Chisa around for a while. Right now, we were in Chichijima's shopping district. Something to get out of the way first? Hmm. Uh, what's that? Yeah, what's that? Chisa stopped outside one of the few supermarkets on Chichijima. Oh, stock up on supplies? These, there were already a lot of customers bustling around inside. Oh yeah, today is cargo day. Cargo day? The Ogasawara Islands are so remote, it takes 24 hours to get here from Tokyo or so to get some supplies. So life here was a little different from the rest of the country. One big difference was cargo day. When ships came in on cargo day, locals flooded the supermarket. Maybe there's discount sales and all that. The ships carried over tourists like myself, but also the food and supplies needed for daily life. So on cargo day, everyone was in a rush to get the latest goods. You buy bulks to stow away until the next shipment. No one wanted to risk having to go without them. That's just the way it is. It was. This sure takes me back. It was one of the enduring aspects of the Okasawara lifestyle. Did you just bring me along to help you carry stuff? Maybe that's part of it. Well, yes, true. Chisa waved her shopping list in my direction. Picking out extra supplies was all in a day's work for a good neighbor like her. And if that was the case, I couldn't complete. Even if I had just gotten here, it was the least that I could do. I followed Chisa into the battlefield known as the Doka Supermarket. Oh boy. No, no, I'll be okay. I wouldn't be much of a gentleman if I did that. I said as I carried the four hefty shopping bags in my hand, in my arms. These bags included a week's worth of food for Chisa's family, my grandma, and supplies for the cafe. Oh, oh I'm cool. <laughs> Kakoi? Come on, don't tease me. First time a guy doing something for you? She was enjoying this way too much. She just skipped off the head of me like she didn't have a care in the world. I followed her back towards the cafe, hoping grandma had cooled off by now. As we walked through the streets, I noticed tourists looking at us now and then. Some even called out to Chisa and asked if they could take a photo with her, <laughs> and she's kind of blushing. Probably everyone do, does know her as the dolphin girl, right? Yeah. Each time she politely declined. You're a real celebrity, huh? Yeah, you, you appeared on TV too, you know? So, you're yeah, really famous, isn't aren't you? Just as the woman at the harbour had said Chisa had been on TV the other day, she was introduced as the dolphin girl of Ogasawara, a beautiful young girl who swam with her dolphin friend. Who wouldn't want to do a story on that? I didn't see it myself, only found out about it afterwards. Why? You should be, you should be glad. It's, I know it's embarrassing, but still. She was blushing now, clearly uncomfortable with the subject. Finn was a stray dolphin that, for some reason, had been chased out of his pot. When Chisa first found him, he was tiny, weak, and injured. Probably picked up a piton by other dolphins. With some advice from a caretaker at the aquarium, she had managed to nurse the dolphin back to health. And since he had stayed in the waters around Chichijima even after he recovered, he was still good friends with Chisa. They had all played together as children, but it was, I wasn't a great swimmer. And with Finn's personality, things didn't always go well. Even now, I tense up whenever I see a dolphin. 
I can't shake the feeling that they're hiding a devious nature beneath that cute facade. Now, most dolphins are cute, okay? Most dolphins are kind. It's just this one is the mischievous type. At least he taught me that some dolphins aren't as friendly as they look. Kyutaro, Kyutaro yeah, Kyutaro. You can't always judge by appearances. And that goes for humans and dolphins. Oi, Chisa! Oh, Rit Guy? Oh, who's this group? Rit Guy. Right then, a slim but muscular guy put up beside us on the bike. Ryo chan! Ryo? Ryo, Ryo chan? Oh. Why is everyone looking for that blonde hat girl though? Ch Chisa shook her head. Saki mo de Minato ni ita kedo, mino kotta na. Nani mono na no? Nanka iye de musume rashi. Yeah. Oyashi no shiriai no musume de shima ni kite ru kara sagashite kure tte tanomare tanda. Ah, see, I knew it. I knew she was running away from home. That's why the call the, on the phone that but she threw the phone into the water. So she she's, she's just she's now just a runaway. <laughs> Where is she gonna stay? Wait, how do you know that? Wait, that real time Ninomiya's eyes finally wandered over to the guy standing beside Shisa, holding the grocery bags. <laughs> Yeah. She looked at me accusingly. Um, and now she said I had probably worked out why I hadn't been there when she came to meet me at the pond. Hey, Ryota, Hisashibui? Majide? Oh no, he's gonna give me a hug. Oh. <laughs> Ryota said as he clapped his shoulder on my. Uh, clap his hand on my shoulder. Yeah, you look like you've been doing well. Oh, Ryota flashed a smile while flexing his biceps. And the three of us were kids, Ryota had always been the leader of our group. So he's like the Anchan in If My Heart Had Wings, right? Yeah. He looked a little bit like a delinquent, but he had a cut of gold underneath all those muscles. <laughs> Definitely not. Mm, okay. I don't think she's, she's suicidal though. Oh god, I hope not. Rebellious for sure. Nope. I saw her on the ferry and we talked for a bit. It was really just by chance that we bumped into each other. Okay. With that real time, his bicycle continued down the road. Well, yes, that's true. I I yeah. <laughs> I was starting to realize that my actions may have more serious consequences than I had thought. But we'll find her. Huh? I'm good. Then how about we go for a walk for a bit? Alright. It seems that being left behind the pot had put Chisa in a pack. She briskly walked her head. I picked up the bags and shuffled after her. Okay. 